started when I was 14. That's when I figured it all out. Wow. You're 10 whole years ahead of me. Yeah, but I have a short attention span. I'm thinking about quitting. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do something else. Right? You know what my first job in the workforce was? I had to put on a, a cookie costume <laughs> and hand out flyers on Capitol Hill for a restaurant called the Cookie Bag. The Cookie and Bag? In the middle of August. And what kind of cookie were you dressed as? Huh? Was it a chocolate it's chip? It's the poor, hot, angry ass chocolate chip cookie. San Francisco, please welcome Kay Chappelle. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. What's up, San Francisco? I like your city. It's beautiful, tolerant place. I didn't see much. I haven't seen my friend call me. He was like, Dave, having fun in Frisco? Hell yeah. Seen the sights? No. <laughs> you wanna go see Alcatraz? What kind of nigga in his right mind wants to visit a prison for recreation? <laughs> I got friends in jail I don't visit. <laughs> I don't deal with jails. Don't deal with jails and I don't deal with police. My house got robbed in New York. I didn't even call the police. <laughs> I wanted to, but I couldn't. My crib is too nice. It's not that it's too nice, but it's too nice for me. <laughs> you know how the police are in New York. Soon as I open the door, they'll be like, oh, he's still here. Open and shut case, Johnson. <laughs> Apparently, this black guy broke in and hung up pictures of his family everywhere. <laughs> Never seen anything like it. <laughs> Don't deal with them, man. I, I had to bail a friend of mine out of jail one time. You know, that was horrible. I was scared. I had to walk right into the belly of the beast. I tried to look as non-threatening as possible. Hi. <laughs> I'm here to bail out my buddy. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, while you're here, you do fit a description. <laughs> if you'll walk this way, we can process you. <laughs> That'd always get us. It's fitting those damn descriptions. Now, I could be bitter and blame all the police, but no. I'll tell you who I blame. It's those <laughs> sketch artists. <laughs> they keep drawing the same brother over and over again. Who is this generic man we all look like? I want to know what they say when it's us. You know what I mean? Like, be in that room like, did you get a look? Do you see the guy that tried to rob you? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> He's about six feet tall, I'd say. Six feet tall? Yes. He had his hat on backwards, too. Good. That's good stuff. Hat was on backwards. Yes. He was black? Okay. Big lips, big nose, hanging out. Say no more, sir. I'll draw him from memory. <laughs> you know, let me get my stencil. I think we can trace this guy and save some time. <laughs> they get on the radio, sh calling all cars, calling all cars. Be on the lookout for a black male between 4, 7, and 6, 8. <laughs> between 120 and 380 pounds. He's wearing Nikes. Get this man! 
criminals are insane. I don't even know why people do crime. They want to catch you, they're going to catch you. They can. They got forensics. You ever seen forensics? Those guys find clues nobody else thinks about looking for. I mean it. You leave a pubic hair anywhere near a crime scene, they're gonna find that What the, what the hell is this? Back up! <laughs> we got a match. <laughs> then they look at the pubic and tell all kinds of information. Hmm, hmm. Looks like there was a struggle. Uh, time of death, 307. It's amazing. I saw him get a dude one time on court TV. It was embarrassing. It was, it was a sexual assault case. I knew the defendant was lying. I could feel it. He defended himself too hard. He did, his answers had nothing to do with the questions. They're completely irrelevant. They ask him easy questions. Were you anywhere near the crime scene on the night of the incident? Mother I told you I work at Burger King. He was like, oh. <laughs> that went on for hours. Then the prosecutor got fed up. Said, I've had enough of this. Called the forensics to the stand. Forensics was like, Your Honor, we are prepared to testify that we found the defendant's semen under the stove. I said, God damn. Now, that's worse than fingerprints. You know, they find your semen, you've been there at least a minute. But that's what I want to know. Under the stove, you find semen like that? Or do you look for it? Like, do they walk onto a crime scene like, this place is a mess. Check it for semen. <laughs> or do they just like walk in and slip? <laughs> oh my God. What the hell was that? Semen. They find it on every crime scene. It's like, what are burglars doing? We got the stuff, let's get out of here. Wait a minute. I want to leave my calling card. The semen bandit has struck again. I don't understand nothing anymore. I don't. I watched TV the other day. Now tell me, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm crazy, is it me? Is it me or do commercials have nothing to do with the products anymore? <laughs> you think, I don't even know what a commercial is about until the end. <laughs> Everyone's a surprise nowadays. You seen that commercial where the lady got the black eye? This lady come on TV with a black eye, she's crying. She's like, I smoke crack. <laughs> and my husband beats me. And then a voice came on and said, got milk? I said, what the <laughs> It has nothing to do with milk. I'm not saying I'm a commercial expert, but I'll make a better milk commercial than that. Just make it nice and simple. I just do a close-up of a titty and put milk right underneath. And if that doesn't sell milk, nothing will, boy. I'll tell you that right now. It's 1997. Titties are industry in 1997. They are. I know they are. I'm a customer. <laughs> I went to a titty ball last week at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now that's bad. That is bad. Because it wasn't like I was out. I said, let me, let me swing by the titty bar. No. No, I left my house specifically <laughs> to see some tits. Can't judge me, there's breast in there. It's just what men do. If a guy runs up to you on the street, it's like, hey, hey, don't go in that building. There are naked girls showing their breast. Be like a white dude in a horror movie. I better investigate. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna want to see for myself. <laughs> Titty bar's a weird place. I'm not saying it's a good place to hang out. I, I go there every once in a while. <laughs> but it's a weird place. They got weird morality. One time I walked in Titty bars, all these guys coming in, right? Out of all these dudes that bounce and pick me out the crowd, start yelling at me. Hey, 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 buddy, sir, sir, you want to take your hat off? Huh? <laughs> It's disrespectful to the ladies. <laughs> yeah, I can shove a 20 up her ass, but I better not have a hat on when I do it. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. Here you go, Bubbles. <laughs> Forgive me for the hat thing. You know why those bars are so popular now? It's because men don't know how to deal with women in reality. So sometimes we gotta take the fantasy road. The reality of the situation is very grim. <laughs> women have made a lot of progress in a short period of time, man. It's changed everything. Can't deal in relationships anymore. I broke up with my girl, I'm out of Shawshank. I'm free. <laughs> I don't wanna go back. Couldn't even argue with her. You should be able to argue. If you have an issue in a relationship, you should be able to argue that issue out, right? But see, ladies, you gotta stick to the issue. You guys take arguments everywhere just to win them. That's why nothing ever gets done. You be arguing about the dishes, baby. Baby, could you wash your dish at least before you put it in the sink? Premature ejaculator? Damn it. You know, why you gotta bring that up? I don't even believe in that. I don't. If I man, it was right on time. That's the way I see it. And as far as I'm concerned, I can't fast enough. You know, I'm sick of being vilified all the time. David, how could you? How could you? I was. Well, what were you trying to do, huh? <laughs> well, I beat you. You gotta work on your time, baby. I'm down to a minute 20. They're mad at me because I have different goals and sex. I'm a speed <laughs> I'm just trying to hit my best time. It's like the Olympics. And now for the dismount. It wasn't all bad. It's never all bad. You won't stay if it's all bad. Nah, that's not true, but I, I wouldn't. She, yeah, we had fun. We used to watch porn together. That's how cool she was. It, you, know, you know, it seems nasty, but it's fun. We learned about each other. She learned about me. <laughs> One time we was watching porn. I'll never forget this time. The first, the first scene in this movie was hardcore. Two guys, one girl going at it. I fast forwarded right through that. I did, mean, it was too much for my senses. <laughs> the scene after that was these two girls and this guy. And you know, I stopped for a minute. I had to see what this was all about. And she noticed. She said, what is that? Now, why, why does that disgust you? Two men and one woman. The men aren't touching each other, but the women are. The two women, those men touch each other. The two men don't touch each other. Why is that nasty to men? And I'll tell you why. Hey, ladies, you can call me crazy, but I think every, every straight man has a rule. <laughs> that would be the one penis per fantasy rule. <laughs> my d is the star of my fantasy. Nobody else's is guest starring in my This is a Dave Chappelle joint. You gotta look at the whole picture, man. Now you get two girls and a guy in a room together. That, boy, that's something else. That's holding and hugging, friendship and helping, teamwork at its very, very best, my friends. You get two guys and a girl in a room. 
It's the wrong kind of teamwork. It's downright brutal if you ask me. I'll pull her hair. I'll smack her ass. That poor woman looked like a chicken on a rotisserie and help me! My life. It's too much there to stress you out. This whole world is just drug infested. Hate infested, drug infested world. Hate drugs. I heard the worst drug story. You know what my friend told me? You know what he's dealing with? His landlord is hooked on crack. That's, that's terrible. That's pressure. Your landlord's hooked on crack. That means you've got to have the rent. You come around all the time. I got the rent. It's not even due yet, it's the 10th. Come on, I need it. Let me just get $20 of it now and then, uh, just give me the rest of the end of the month. Every couple hours, hey, look, I'm gonna need some more of the rent. This building's falling apart, things came up. Comes home early from a party. Landlord's in the crib going through his What are you doing in my house? Ah! Where's the sink? I came to fix it. It's in the kitchen. I thought it was in the drawer. I'll fix it tomorrow when I come for the rent. <laughs> you know what I hate about drugs? I hate when like people my age and older get hooked on crack. I hate that you're too, you're too old to be experimenting with the drugs at a certain point. You should be past that. You ain't doing it by a certain point, you just miss it. <laughs> drugs are really for old people anyway. You 75, you've earned the right. I'm, if I was 75, I'd do coke, heroin, everything. I wouldn't give a <laughs> I'd be walking down the street, they'd be like, boy, that old man is tripping. Can't do everything. Maybe weed. If you're gonna do something, do a little weed. Smoke some. weed. Weed's not as bad as everything else. So weed is a background substance. You know I mean, you can smoke some herb and still function. And you ain't crisp, but you'll function. Nothing higher than weed, though. I made that mistake one time. I, I was at a party. Some guy gave me some. He's like, here, man, take this. It's mushrooms. I took it. I forgot all about it, you know. Then a couple days later, I found it in my pocket. I'm thinking, why not? Because I'm thinking it's like weed. Some background I planned my whole day out like it was weed. <laughs> I'll chew this up. Then I'll go to the barber shop, get my hair cut, and then I'll see a movie. I chewed it up. So far, so good. <laughs> then I was in a barber shop like an hour later. And it's funny because I was just thinking to myself, I was like, ooh, this stuff sucks. <laughs> Tastes like an athlete's foot. <laughs> I feel sick, but I'm not really high. <laughs> then I looked in the mirror. I saw the barber's reflection, man. It looked like, it looked like a big penis was cutting my hair. I freaked out. I started talking to myself, Dave, calm down. You're on drugs. This is what drugs do. Can you know that there is no way that a penis can cut hair. <laughs> but I started freaking out, man. I just couldn't take it anymore. I jumped out the chair, half my hair was cut. I didn't care. I, I didn't, I just gave a bob a handful of money. It was weird, the balls opened up. Anyway, I, <laughs> I ran home, man. I ran home as fast as I could. It's tripping, it's tripping. I looked at the clock, it was 2.42. I was like, damn. 242, I gotta sober up. I had never been this high this early.
<laughs> I took a shower. I was still high. I said, maybe music will do the trick. I listened to every CD I had. I was still high. Exercise, that's what I'll do. I ran around the block four times, still high. Took a nap, woke up, <laughs> up. I looked at the clock, it was 2.43. I said, God, damn. Who did this song? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's just my grand our grandmother used to sing that when she cleaning up. That's a Negro spiritual. Black work song. <laughs> Not everybody know about that. I know. See, white people, you guys might whistle when you work. <laughs> you dig? But that's how you can tell what kind of work we're actually doing. <laughs> I study that kind of <laughs> I do anything that has to do with race. I read a little here, see a little there, and I travel. That's always good. Uh, traveling has made me a, a racism connoisseur, if you will. <laughs> you know, it's different from region to region. Anyone ever been down south? Yeah. So you guys know what I'm talking about. And the racism down there is just <laughs> it's perfect. It's due to a perfection. It's out in the open. There are no secrets in Mississippi. Everybody knows the deal. Morning, nigger. Morning, sir. <laughs> Not up here. You hit the big cities, man. It's different. It's always a secret. And we should do like them. We should keep our shit out in the open, then a little. I mean, with limits. You, you don't want to say whatever comes to your mind. That might be a little much. White dude be walking down the street, minding his business, and the brother walk up to him, hello. You white oppressor, you slave master rapist of Africa. Be, <gasps> Why, hello, my big lip spear chucking friend. <laughs> Touche, honky. So, Whitey, what did you do today, huh? Oppress a new land and make the people there Christians against their will? <laughs> what did you do, fellow? Burn those big black lips on a crack pipe as you miss your job interview? <laughs> Easy, Whitey, you're cutting deep. Oh, this chit-chat has got me thirsty. You will excuse me for a moment. I'm gonna go to the Korean store and get something to drink. <laughs> Chilling. <laughs> Hello. You slanted eyed, ruining the economy in our neighborhood by opening stores and taking the money out the community. Chink. <laughs> well. <laughs> Good afternoon, you browse around but never buy anything. Suspicious looking nigga. After a while, that might be too much. <laughs> you can't help it. If you're an American, you're a racist. We brought up from the beginning to think in generalizations. We never look at the individual. We rarely look at the individual. I'm a racist. I know I'm a racist. You know how I know? The other day, I caught myself being racist against myself. <laughs> There's so much getting on, I got mixed up. Forgot whose team I was on it. <laughs> One time I was reading the paper, man, this story came on about the, uh, this guy was suing a department store because they wouldn't let him play Santa Claus, you know, because he's black. And I was actually like relieved when the department store beat him. That's bad. But I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for the idea of a black Santa Claus. Man, that would suck. 
So we wouldn't get our presents to the 28th, 29th. Oh, sorry I'm late, kids. Santa got caught up with some in Vegas. I had to sell some toys to get back, shit. Where them cookies at? Y'all a great crowd, man. You are. I'm glad y'all came out, man. I, I'm nervous. I am. Not about the special, I just, I hope this don't make me famous. <laughs> you dig? I don't want to be famous famous. I want people to like me for who I am. Like famous dude don't never know why people like them. That's why like if you, if I ever make it, I'm gonna have to like, Test people. Like if I meet girls, I wear disguises when they first meet me. So they don't know who I am. And then like on the first date, I'll call myself, I'll pick you up right from work. And then I'll pick her up in a garbage truck. <laughs> just to see how she reacts. And she's like, wait a minute. Oh, oh, do I look like garbage to you? I don't see no goddamn trash need to be picked up here. Get that goddamn truck off my block. Who do you think you are? That's when I take my mask off. <gasps> David Chappelle. <laughs> That's right, bitch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It's Dave Chappelle. That's right, bitch. Doing what he does best. Your landlord's hooked on crack. That means you gotta have the rent. I got the rent. It's not even due yet. It's the 10th. Come on, I need it. Dave Chappelle. Coming up next, part of Stand Up Month on Comedy Central. In a stand up special, John Leguizamo gets in touch with his feminist side. Why her beef? Why not him beef? The network television premiere of John Leguizamo's Sexaholics, A Love Story. Next Sunday at 10, part of Stand Up Month on Comedy Central. Mm hmm.